Howdy folks, Brian Cusco here at Triple B, coming back at you again with another Herpeton talk, this time from John Tastian. John is a legendary herper from down in San Diego area, lifelong herper, and he's got really cool species to share with us today. Some really cool species I'd never even seen before, actually lots of species that I've never seen before. Very cool. I hope you guys enjoy it. This one's short and sweet. You're watching Triple B TV. I'm just fascinating by the beauty of these critters. So I want to show you uh, what I've seen. What I'm thinking is there a herper with soul so dead who never to himself has said, man, how cool would it be to have a T-Rex for a pet? Trouble is, you'd have to get a couple of Triceratops every two weeks just to feed him. Even a 30-foot retic or a Nile croc would be kind of tough to squeeze into your little hole-in-the-wall apartment if you could slip it past your nosy neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> to be practical, pretty king snake or a racer can take more space than uh, you might have in your small quarters. A lot of things we keep are not practical. But we're lucky in this part of the country that we have these little critters uh, that we can find in our local area. As I said, I go back to the time of uh, Clover. Clover was president of the gas company in San Diego and he used to have to travel to uh, Hoover Dam. And he made it a practice to drive slowly through Borrego. And he made notes of the uh, critters there and, and the surrounding terrain, uh, phases of the moon, the temperatures. He, he had a very organized mind. And these are some of the critters that he, he saw. The rubber snake, rubber boa, is a miniature of reticulated pythons and boa constrictors. And it only gets to be less than three feet long. So it can be kept in a small apartment. Ringneck snakes don't get very big. I fed them on uh, slender salamanders, but uh, a lot of them, the information I have is out of Stebbins. He was my prof back in early times. He, uh, he said they fed on slugs and worms. Sharp-tailed snake feeds on slugs. This is more uh, uh, from the more humid areas along the coast. Guyalopian from Arizona and Mexico. They're said to feed on arachnids. Chylomeniscus is a little tiny snake found in the southwest and down in Baja. But all of these, I think, are really attractive and would make a nice pet to have in, in your little apartment. Chyanactus. This and the previous ones are uh, sand swimmers, and they've got shovel nose and uh, indented uh, lower jaw. Ophiodries is more of an eastern snake, but it gets uh, into the sort of boundary of our area. And uh, again, they feed on little invertebrates. Philorhynchus is another pretty one, and they come in a couple of species. You don't want to have a coral snake, or maybe a king snake is too big, but some of the sonoras are uh, just as pretty, if not more so, and the Sonora emula is quite variable. They come with, well, this one, the upper one has five triads and the lower one has 10. And I presume there are others in between. Samophora is another Eastern 
a snake, but it's small enough to qualify as a miniature, in my eyes, anyway. Eridophus is a small night snake from Baja, California, and it was named after Joe Slevin. Slevin uh, did quite a bit of uh, exploring in Baja. Hypsiglina is spotted night snake. Presumably, it feeds on uh, nestling mice and, and other small vertebrates. Tantilla is another little one. That, this feeds on invertebrates. And uh, there are several species of this uh, throughout the southwest. Well, this is a miniature that you probably don't want. The Sidewinder. They don't get up any more than three feet at the most that I know of. Aniella is a true miniature. They get up a little over six inches long. Uh, I found the Nigra in the south coast of Monterey Bay in damp sand under uh, some bushes growing. I don't know what they feed on. Probably insects, I'm sure. Bipes biforis, the ahalote. They were very uh, rare. Uh, and, and the first I heard of it was when uh, I was working at the zoo in San Diego here, and Chuck Shaw's girlfriend was uh, going to Baja, California, and uh, she asked if there was anything he wanted. And he said, yeah, get me a couple of ahalotes without much hope. Well, she worked at the uh, TV station in San Diego at the time. So down in uh, La Paz, there were no TV at the time. So she uh, went to the radio station and took out an ad and came back with 11. <laughs> the secret is to get the people <laughs> that know about these critters to find them for you. Incidentally, Chuck married her. <laughs> oh, there are some nice little lizards, uh, geckos. The Swedekai uh, has recently been discovered, rediscovered by Carl Swetak. And uh, the others, Variegatus is from uh, eastern, southeastern San Diego County, well, eastern San Diego County on the desert side, and uh, Brevis is from Texas. Uh, these are night lizards. Henshaw I, Jim Sherman, uh, advised me that they're very common. Hardly anybody knows about them, but they live under granite flakes. And uh, he took me up uh, and placed near where he works and lives and we found a couple of them under granite flakes. Well, some of the uh, diurnal uh, lizards, you may not want them. Nemedophorus. I've always thought of them as little dinosaurs. Most of our local lizards have sort of horizontal snouts, but this one has more of a vertical, and I have thought of it as a dinosaur. This one it acts like a little dinosaur, like a T-Rex. And it'll eat uh, anything almost up to its own size. And that is collared lizard. And then these are leopard lizards. The one with the orange is a gravid female. One found even in the San Joaquin Valley. I believe that's the upper right. That's the short-nosed desert iguana. They're omnivorous, and you know, all of these uh, plant foods that we've been hearing about would uh, work for a desert iguana. Skinks, the blue tail and pink tail, are uh, juveniles. They lose that coloring as they get older and become more unicolored. This is another dinosaur. Uh, it'll try to eat your fingers. Phrynosoma feeds on ants, and they're kind of hard to come by. And the ants that it used to feed on 
uh, around my place were the uh, carpenter ants, and they were big, about half an inch long. But the Argentine ants have moved in, and uh, there are no more native ants, and consequently, no more horned lizards. Uh, Scalopteris are very common. I used to be about a half a mile from the highway, and there was nothing in between. But now it's all built up. There's nothing much left. There used to be uh, rattlesnakes, rosy boas, racers, uh, all kinds of uh, small snakes. But now the, about the only thing I see once in a while is a rattlesnake. Uh, the Uma is found in sandy areas. There's a section of sand uh, dunes over near the Colorado River. And that's where one of these are found. Yudas are found almost all over. And here's another one you don't want in your little apartment. Well, that's about it. So. I uh, hope you got a chance to uh, get an idea of some of the beauty that's found in our area. Thank you. Thank you, John, for sharing those animals with us. Maybe somebody out there will be interested in bringing those animals to be more popular in, in the keeping hobby uh, than, than they are today. That would be pretty cool. And uh, for you folks, next week we've got Mr. Phil Goss of US Ark. And until then, you've been watching Triple B TV. Y'all take care.